Hello, good evening, and welcome. As, as someone I think once said, or maybe more than once, they said that we're here to discuss matters at London Stadium yesterday, match day 37 of 38. We are one game away from the end of the Premier League season, Duke, and we took on the, the reigning champions and probably the champions elect Manchester City, and we got a Desmond. And in doing so, we've secured. In Mark Noble's last match at the London Stadium, European football, back-to-back, -back, for the first time in our history, via our league placing. Monumental, I would argue. Yeah, I mean, don't, don't you dare, don't you dare, let me boost that, there we go. <laughs> you, you that, I've, I've got something I want to discuss about this. I've got something I want to discuss about this. Mm. I sent a tweet out. Instantly. You're not going to start that one though, are you? Uh, I, I don't know. I, I, he I, saved your I, one, Milesy. He'll come I've, back to it. I've, I've sent a tweet out into the ether uh, yesterday evening. Fuck it. Should we start there? Should we start with the tweet that went out into the ether? Or do you want Please to cover do. the game first? Yeah, stuff it. I'll tell, I'll tell you what. Before we, before we do, the, the housekeeping rules. You know you know how it works, Duke. Please don't forget to like, comment on, and share the stream to your social media platform. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell icon for alerts on new content. As always, ladies and gentlemen, we thank you very much indeed for your support. I would also like to turn your attention to this um iron supporting food banks there is the website in all its glory please feel free to go there and make a donation should you be able to do so this is a the charity that operates in the new and borough area for families that maybe not be as lucky as you and i so i'm just going to put it in the link the link in the chat now <clears throat> the judge giving link is right there if you can put a couple of quid in to help some families out there that are doing maybe not as well as you and I are doing, please feel free to do so. And as always, guys, we thank you very much indeed for your support in this matter as well. OK, talk to me. Anthony Taylor, you want to get it off your chest now? Let's cover this first. I'm going to leave that there. Now, mm. I sent a tweet out into the ether, and I do believe you brought it to my attention yesterday, Rob. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you props for bringing this to my attention. <laughs> now, we've discussed on numerous <clears throat> occasions, numerous occasions. Okay, mm -hmm. the. You call it an unconscious bias. Yeah. I, I call it straight up cheating. Don't give it monkeys. Um, yep. About this this behavior for the top six. Um, or the, sorry, let me rephrase that. The big six, the Sky Sports big six. Yep. Being the top six in any numeration, any order, it doesn't matter to yep. them. As long as... The, the six are taking up the top places in the Premier League. They don't care yeah. if Arsenal win the league and Tottenham finish sixth and the other places are filled up by the guys in between. As long as those six are the six, okay? They don't care. They don't want pesky little teams like West Ham, Wolves, Leicester, Newcastle possibly next season. Well, maybe Ooh. not. Maybe not. I think they might be added into the list. I'm not yeah, going to lie. They'll did, be invited I did, to have the party. A of, I did have a little bit of a look into this. Now, you call it an unconscious bias. I call it straight up shat. Right? Because I've had enough of it now, Rob. Um, and it showed yesterday. Okay? It showed yesterday. I'm going to start that. Um, I thought you might. We had a referee <clears throat> that came from Manchester. He was yes. uh, his his place of residence is Manchester. Okay, now he might not with have sure, yeah, yeah. He might not have an affiliation with. Um, I'm having that one. We <laughs> might, you know, he might not. He might not have any um, any any uh, association, you know, supportership wise or or other to to either club. I'm not saying he does. Okay. Let's clear that up straight away. 
Yep. I am saying he is a referee that comes from an area in Manchester. Refereeing, refereeing a club out of Manchester against the London side where if the club from Manchester win the game, both clubs from the Manchester area benefit yep. from um, from that Manchester side having a victory. Now, yes, I saw more than enough <clears throat> yesterday, Rob, and I was incredibly lucky um, last minute. Um, I, Ken, he may well do. Yes, I he I've I said, done no, a bit of research. Apparently, yes, that is his team. No affiliation to to either club. What I'm saying is, he's from the Manchester area, and maybe his life's a little bit easier in Manchester. If, but anyway, what I saw yesterday, okay, um, and I was very lucky, as I was saying, that um, at the at the nth hour. I was managed to score myself two face value tickets to go uh, to the game. Um, I was offered one on Tuesday or Wednesday last week for three hundred and twenty-five pound. Um, that prat was <laughs> that prat was blocked and kicked out of a um, group that I help admin um, for West Ham tickets, and um, will not be seen again anywhere near uh, myself or, or the page now. Three hundred and twenty-five quid wanker, right? I'm not going to name yep. and shame. That's that's Bose's job. That's not mine. Now, <laughs> I was lucky enough to go. Now, Rob, after sixty, I'm what revolution? After sixty-four, sixty-six minutes, I turned mm -hmm. around and said to you, I looked you straight in the eye because we did. sat next to each other, and I said, Sat. All right, we stood." We were on the concrete at the back. That's not. We weren't in anyone. I turned around and I said to you that I'm resigned to getting nothing from this game. It's laughable. There were other words mixed in with this. I'm paraphrasing. Yes. It's, it's laughable. But I am resigned to getting nothing out of this game. Um, the referee gave us nothing. I mean, I there were... There were times in the game where Antonio was was clattered. Yes, some of those times he went to ground a little bit too easy for a guy of his stature and his size, right? But on the reverse side to that, when he gave well, when that's he our gave, start, Walshy. When he gave as good as he was getting, yep. City were getting the free kicks. Um, for Antonio exactly. doing the same to Fernandinho, <clears throat> Rodri, Cancelo, um, as was being done to him. City would get the free kick. We wouldn't. Um, Hamish Chat brought up um, on their Patreon um, that Antonio and uh, Fernandinho were da -da -da over on the wing. The ball came off of Fernandinho and went out for a throw on to West Ham. Fernandinho wanted the free kick. Referee told him it wasn't a free kick, get up and take the throw on. He gave the throw on to mm. Manchester City. Well, if it's not Steven. a free kick, it's a throw on to West Ham. So I was resigned and I I said to you that, they were the yes. exact words, and then in the 84th minute, did I or did I not laugh, Rob, when he went to the VAR monitor? I laughed because yes, you I did. knew, we knew what, what was, was going on. Okay, the ref listen, the referee <clears throat> can't make um he can't make uh, a situation where the goalkeeper saves it, his foot's on the line, no one encroaches. He has to let it go. That penalty was saved. It was a fair save. It was viewed by VAR that no players were in the box. He didn't come off his line. Shit. What am I going to do? I can't do nothing now. I've got to let it go. Carry on. Um, and, and I laughed, Rob. I, I did laugh. You, did. Uh, you know I did um, because I was resigned that Chuckle of resignation. Yeah, our fate had been decided prior, and I've said this about. Um, I've, I've said it about. Um, <laughs> I've literally I've starred about four. You're, you're star, starring all of them. You're you're not getting a clue here. You're not having a chance to put anything up. I'm just nicking Fine, them. Crack on. Um, and as as Andy's just said, it's blatant now, Rob. 
It's mm. there. You can see it week in, week out. We went to the supporters bar afterwards. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Everton Brentford. I'm getting agitated now. Everton Brentford. Okay. Dominic Calvert Lewin racing through. Christopher uh, comes in with a slide tackle. Yes. Doesn't touch Calvert Lewin. He jumps over him. But because of the speed he's running at, his body's at a forward angle. And he lands on his knees and goes into a slide. Yep. The referee blows up. The referee gives a free kick to Everton and he books Christoph Ayer. Now, if I may, mm -hmm. same fucking referee, Rob, yes. that refereed the West Ham Arsenal game that booked Jared Bowen for diving because he jumped out of the way of a reckless Correct. challenge. Michael Oliver, yes. Where's the consistency? Not even consistency, Rob. It's one rule for the big six. I'm sorry, mm. but it is. If that had been the other way round, different story altogether. The Arsenal forward isn't getting booked. Our goalkeeper may well be sent off. And um, no, Sharky, I haven't. Please keep me updated with the score, please. Um, as Andy says... It's blatant now, Rob. Mm. Um, it's they're not even trying to hide this bullshit. Um, I guarantee, I promise you now. If there's anything in this Arsenal game tonight, it won't it won't go either way. There'll be no Arsenal bias because Arsenal are clear in the top ten, top six. Newcastle can't make a run at the top six now, so there'll be no dodgy decisions tonight. There'll be nothing in favour of Arsenal. It'll be a fair game to watch, OK? It will be, because there's no bias in it. But what I saw yesterday in the two games that, you know, I watched the... the, the I didn't see the sending off. We didn't see the, 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 the first goal. We got in the supporters club late because we watched um, we watched no stuff. Um, yes. And we'll come to that. Um, what I'm saying is there's a lack of consistency and a massive, massive, massive favouritism towards the top six to the point that I'm, I'm beyond even caring. I'm going to call it as it is. They have been told to make sure that decisions go the way of the top six, to keep the top six in the top six, because that's where the money is. As I was explaining to people downstairs, people in South Korea, Rob, sign up to watch the Premier League games. They give the Premier League money yep. be it via Sky Sports, be it via some random uh, TV channel out in South Korea because mm -hmm. of Human Son. Yep. Okay. Human Son at Spurs. People in South Korea don't give two shits about Spurs, Rob, but they give two shits about Human Son. They're there to watch yep. Human Son. If Human Son left tomorrow and went to Barcelona... Sky Sports, Sky Sports in the Premier League will lose career as a subscribing service because they're going to go to Spain now. That's just the way this works, okay? Man United have a huge following in Japan and China. Let's keep them in the top six. We have to. At all costs, let's keep them in the top six. I promise you now, on Sunday, you will see some very, very dodgy decisions that will go in the favour of Manchester United in the hope that they will help them get the win so they stay in the top six. And pesky little West Ham don't sneak in at the last minute. I'm sick to the back teeth of being of, of sitting there watching it. You know, someone someone put on Twitter yesterday about the integrity of the Premier League is back. Because <laughs> things like Everton and Brentford and Leeds and whoever they played, Palace possibly, I don't know. Yeah. How they were going at it and going for the game. Um, so I, 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 I replied to the tweet, integrity, the referee in the West Ham Man City game was so biased yesterday, it was painful. He was, he was under instructions, and I don't care if this comes back on me, there's no allegedly around me. Dave. He was under instructions yesterday to make sure Man City got the win, to make sure that we didn't take sixth place. I'm telling you now... <laughs> That's what that was. And he did everything in his power to stop us from getting anything out of that game. It was only fact that he couldn't make them retake the penalty because there was no encroachment and no removal from the line. There was none of that. He couldn't, he didn't have that in his control. But he also played an extra three minutes beyond the four minutes of added injury time. I know it's a recommended, 
or mm. a minimum, minimum. of. But yeah, he yeah. played seven, and the only way he blew the whistle was after Man, U, after Man City's attack came to fuck all right at the end of the game. That was the only reason he blew the whistle. And I'm pretty sure if he could have got away with letting them take their throw on, he would have done so. Ah, now, Malsey's just made a comment. I dare say you're going to star that one because we was talking about, or you yeah. was talking about that. Go on, you're going to star it, aren't you? He will come to your comments, Malsey. He's not ignoring if them. I, he's if I he's go, racking them up. If I may go through the ones I've got. Crack on, um, mate. Um, 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 this one. Andy, um, I, I saw this. Um, their fan, they're one of their fan sites um, posted a a tweet saying um, Europa League with some eyeballs on it. Um, they're, they're convinced that um, no matter what they do next week, a draw is also enough to get them. As long as they avoid defeat, yeah. their new fans are convinced that they can qualify for Europe, uh, or for Europa League, sorry. I don't think they realise that a draw for them and a victory for us sees us take Europa League by way of uh, goal difference. Well, if they draw, they go to 59 points, don't they? Yeah. Yes. So we, if, we, we we, win, if we win, then yeah, we would overtake them. Yeah. Goal difference, goal difference right? Yeah. They, ha- they have to, they have to better or, or say more better our result hmm. to, to qualify for the Europa League. Yeah, the draw is not enough if we win. I, I, personally, I don't give a shit. I, I take Europa League. I take Conference League right now. I, I, listen, it's back to back. I don't care. Don't get me wrong. The fact that we're still in with a shot and I want it, but I don't care if we don't. We're still. In, if it was a case of we need, we need them to lose for you know European football next season. Different story. I said I don't give a shit. We're already in Europe. It doesn't matter. Um, Ken, years ago, you couldn't ref local clubs. Um, we should have had Mike Dean for the FA Cup final. Um, he was allowed to because he was too close to Liverpool. Problem is, uh, the, the, a lot of the elite, so-called, a lot of the so-called elite refs um, are Northern. I, I get that. I get that. And um, would you have a Liverpool ref referee against Man City yesterday? Probably not. But mm. surely there's a South Coast referee I... somewhere around, and you you, yeah. you juggle it. You have to. You could, like. There's there's no reason that that had to happen yesterday, Rob. No reason that that needed to happen yesterday. Can I just before you go on to the next one because mm-hmm. this is something that does bug me. As I say, he is apparently an Altrincham fan, but fundamentally he is from the city of Manchester. And as you said, he will very likely have close friends and family members that are either fans of Manchester United or Manchester City, even if he is a true fan of Altrium. So, as you say, it it could be argued that does it make his life a bit easier going around the city of Manchester? Of but it just, just on that, just on that. Now, this is this is an article I found a little bit earlier when I was looking for information Sorry, on mind? who... I thought I can do it now. When I was looking for information on who Anthony Taylor's club allegiances were, I came across this article, and and this is a direct quote from a referee you may have heard of, and the people watching this may have heard of. His name is Keith Hackett. Oh, and I know, him. I know Keith, not yes, personally, but yes. I know Keith Hackett quite well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not- not only is he the guy that that made the first sending off of a player under the professional foul rule in a very important game that we might remember, he was all is also the former head of the Professional Game Match Officials Limited or PGMOL, yeah. and they are the organisation that makes refereeing appointments for Premier League games. I'm quoting this directly. This is Keith Hackett. At the beginning of every season, the referee's background information is audited. They complete a form that includes who they support, the history of if they've played the game and with the addresses where they are residing. That gives you a picture that comes into use when you're appointing. It's about ensuring, for example, you wouldn't appoint a Sheffield based ref for a Sheffield based team. So that makes me think, hold on, Mr. Hackett has just said you wouldn't appoint a Sheffield ref for a game that involves uh, involves a Sheffield team. So why are you involving a Manchester ref in a game that has Manchester City in it and also 
as a result of the you know the way this is, it also has Manchester United connected to it. Yeah, really. Yeah, well, listen. I mean, Andy says apparently he's a United fan. Um, don't want Liverpool getting closer to the titles. Mm. Uh, we proved that he's an Altrincham fan. Andy says, did you see the red linesman dive? I, think I he didn't. Got, no. I think he got clattered. He was on the floor. West Ham were breaking down the wing, and we had to give the ball back to City. I'm not quite sure how that worked. I'm pretty sure it should have come back to us. Um, and I will take Andy's last comment um, towards the end. What I will say is, I don't know whether anyone has seen a comment from former referee Mark Halsey yep. over the last uh, over the last twenty four hours. Um, and I quote Mark Halsey on this. I, I have it here. I'm going to bring it up. There you go. As you can see, I'm reading it straight off of my phone. Um, this this does come. This is a direct comment based off of. What happened in the West Ham, uh, as, as far as I'm led to believe, let me put that out there. As far as I'm led to believe, this is the direct comment based off of the back of uh, yesterday's West Ham game. Okay. Mm. So, Mark Halsey says, I've been in a situation where I've seen an incident. I've been told to say I haven't seen it. To be fair to the FA, it's not them. It comes from the P PGMO, uh, P yeah, that one, PG yep. PGMOL, yeah, uh, okay. professional game match officials limited, yeah, um, and it doesn't stop there. We've told, been told to give a certain amount of corners or throw-ins, fouls, bookings, etc. This is Mark uh, Halsey. Yes. Wow. Halsey. That's his name, not Halsey. 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 H a l s e y. Um, he says, I don't care. The, the Premier League is rife with spot fixing and bias towards certain clubs from the FA. Every Ooh. referee in the Premier League could find themselves in the front of a court one day, very soon. Wow. That comes from Mark Halsey, based off of comments that were made on the West Ham Manchester City game yesterday. So these comments were made in the wake of this game? As far as I'm led to believe. Whether that's an old one and people have now attributed that comment to being said after yesterday's game through show, <coughs> teeth back in, through mm -hmm. social media or whether they've, whether that is genuinely something that's come off of the back, but I am led to believe by uh, um, the people that have been posting across Twitter and social media verse that that mm. came off of the back of yesterday's game. Wow. I'm shocked. Well, so Mark Halsey has just admitted that referees are informed to um, follow a certain bias narrative for want of a better word. Wow. And if that's the case, what else That's... do the other what what else do the other twelve uh fourteen teams in the Premier League need to do? Because we we, we can't really do anything, Rob. If if it's already essentially taken out of our hands, um then I I, I honestly don't know what to say. Um we we're, we're fighting a the other the other fourteen teams in the Premier League are now quite clearly um, we, we're quite clearly fighting a losing battle. Um, we're quite clearly fighting forces that are you know above our heads. We're quite clearly in a situation where. Well, seventh is the first untainted place in the Premier League. So That's everybody else's Premier League title, essentially. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I, I don't know who it was that said it. I think it was something on Twitter, and I'd like to be able to credit the person, but I, without going back and trying to find it, and it was some weeks ago, um, that any team that finishes seventh should now go out and commission their own trophy to be presented on the last game of the season because it is the only um, 
it's the only, it's the only untainted place in the Premiership from now on. I'm going to quickly jump in on here and say, Miles E, no worries, mate. Cheers, mate. Much love to you. He's probably well. already gone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, that came up about four minutes ago. That came up six minutes ago, to be fair. But um, it's, it's nice. Um, so we were... Uh, I don't even know where we are, mate. To be honest with you, in the, in the chat, I hope you're. You've got the starred uh, comments. I've, I thought um, I'd let you crack through the starred comments before I go back to the rest. Um, yeah, all right, no worries. So, um, this one from Milesy, I, I actually yep. commented on BBC's tweet on this. Um, Madness. that you know, Suchek is being touted by several media outlets that he's going to Spurs. Um, and that he should go to Spurs. It's not just that he's going to Spurs. They're also touting that he should go to Spurs for the betterment of, of himself. Nice. You've got BBC yesterday, and if, if anyone wants to know the tweet I'm talking about, jump on Forged from my um, Twitter page, um, Forged Talk, um, or even jump on mine at Hammers Duke, because I actually uh, tagged my, tag my name. I signed off with my name, so it will actually come up on my profile as well. Um the BBC is staying after his 22 uh, goals and assists in the Premier League this season. Maybe Jared Bowen should be looking to move. Why? Thanks for that. Why? As as much as um, on Friday, I did call Trevor Sinclair a prick. You did? For, um, for trying to get, uh, for, for basically outing Declan Rice to move. Um in the summer. If I was Declan Rice, I swear I would move. Shut up, Trev. You're a prick. I called him. I called him a prick. Let's not mess around. Um, he did. Why Why do they feel it necessary to to state that these players need to leave? Rob, we, we, we've got Premier, we've got European football again next season. Yes, we have. They don't need to leave. I, I said the same. Deck doesn't need to need to leave next season. We've given him another shot at European football. Okay, it's not Champions League, <clears> but he <throat> can see the development. The development in, within the club is there. He does not need to leave. Neither of them do. The grass isn't always greener. Why would Why would Jared Bowen want to leave and go sit behind Mo Salah in a Liverpool on the Liverpool bench, getting a few games here and there next season when he can play? consistently and put himself in line to go That's to uh, the World Assuming Cup. that Salah's there next season. There is that. I don't think Liverpool... Listen, we'll do a talk on that. We'll do a video on that because obviously I'm wearing this shirt mm. and obviously they're the owners of Liverpool. They are. And I, I, I know based on the fact that Mookie Betts was told to go fuck himself and he left uh, Boston under a cloud because the Fenway Sports Group wouldn't give him what he thought he was uh, he didn't think he was worth his money and he went on to win the World Series with a team that took him off of the Red Sox hands. it doesn't help um, so yeah Andy said that and then I've got two star comments apparently Rob okay um, the first one actually I'm going to cover this one quickly um, Ken I was knackered when I got home yesterday because I was emotionally drained. We'll cover this a bit more at the end when we do the, the, the post-match stuff. Mm. Um, after we've spoken about the game and we're half hour in, so we're going to crack on. But I was knackered. I had tears in my eyes. I'm not going to lie. I had goosebumps, everything. I was a mess at one point. Um but yeah, it was a, it was a hard day. It was a it was a very emotionally taxing day yesterday. I have to say. Hmm. And then this man who told me he was coming to the pub yesterday to watch the game, and then apparently the prick was at the ground. Didn't come and say hello. Apparently, then told um, Happy and the rest of them to go round to um, to the Carpenters. Which hmm. then was so full that no bastard could get in there. But <laughs> I want to say thank you to, to Mo. Cyber. Every little helps. Thank you, Mo. Cheers, Mo. Much, much love. Um, God bless. You lovely man. Um, the next time, luckily I was at the ground, so I didn't care you were in at my pub. But if you'd been at my pub, I would have been at the ground. I still would have missed you. So, um, yeah. Um, so that's my star comments done, Rob. Cool. I'll let you carry on from where you're doing your bits. And um, let's talk about the game. Yeah, so 2-0 up at half-time, Luke. 
Can we just have a look at that lovely thing behind me? It looks beautiful, doesn't it, on my fireplace? Uh, I'll tell you what. Good. Hang on. Look you mean there. what are you? What, so you're pointing at the the that m lovely big glove, aren't you? It, it's not a big glove, Rob. It was certainly not one that he wore. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've, I've not met Phil Parks, but I know that when you shake his hands, much like Ludo's, they disappear. Your yep, hands disappear. Like shovels. Um, that's certainly not one of his gloves. I don't even think that a guy with his big toe probably wouldn't even be able to get his penis in it. Um, but it's a signed one by Phil Parks. I got it at the uh, at the E13 event last uh, last Friday. My mm. dad was told he looks like Phil Parks when he was younger and he used to get asked to sign autographs because people thought it was Phil Parks. He used to sign his name, Peter Stribling, and they'd go, what's this? He goes, well, I'm not who you thought I was. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a lot of time for my old man, but that shit. So I've got that because it just reminds me of the stories my old man used to tell me. Yeah. But could you quite believe it at half time? We were 2-0 up. We, and was... we, we were good value for it. Let's not... Let's not kid ourselves. It's not like we were we were getting battered for forty five minutes. I mean, listen, we, were, we were good value. We we discussed this. We discussed this um, right towards the end of the of the first half. Okay, right towards the end of the first half, because I went down. Uh, I, I missed the first ten minutes of the second half because I went down because Joe wanted something to bloody eat and drink, and I, I, I fucking missed the golden one. But anyway, um, no, we were listen. We had. We looked dangerous going forward, regardless. Regardless, we looked dangerous. Exactly, uh, Ken. Exactly, and I'll do a video on this in the in the coming days, uh, weeks, months, um, maybe towards the end of the year. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I've been doing that. For, I've been doing that for the last year. Now we'll do a video. No. Um, I'm still waiting for that Ben Rama versus Bla Vlasic one. Don't need to. Don't need to. Ben Rama's off in the summer. Mm. Um, now, yeah, we were solid. We looked dangerous going forward. I mean, uh, Gio and Gonzo alluded to it early, uh, earlier on today in, or late last night, whenever they did it. And they said about the fact that City had to keep three people back mm -hmm. because of the tank that was in beast mode yesterday. In Mikel Antonio. And yeah, there was one point, there was really one good. point in the first half where all three of them gathered round him. The ball came to him, he bought it down, and he this for for whatever reason you want to state, he either stayed on his feet or he didn't get fouled. And he turned and he looked all three of them in the eyes and he went, you know what? Fuck it. And he nudged the ball between all three of them. He absolutely clattered Fernandinho on the run. Fernandinho, I think, was already eating turf um, by the time that Antonio was about eight yards away from him. And and Cancelo, and I think it was Rodri, went, what the fuck do we do? Like, this geezer's <laughs> just clattered him. He's laid him down on the turf. What are we meant to do with this guy? He's virtually unplayable when he's in that mood, isn't he? I'm telling you now, it was, it was outstanding from Antonio. I, I said to you we were discussing we were discussing match match um, ratings, weren't we? Mm. Towards the end of the game, and I turned around and said, just based on his effort and his work rate and his determination, he's a ten. Like my God, he I I, I that was the Antonio I love. Okay, yep. um, I did want to. I, I I don't get me wrong. Yeah, I, I agree with what Mike says there. I was still taking control draw uh, 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 um, at half time, even though we were two nil up. I'm not going to fuck around. Um, yeah, you knew they were going to come back at us. But I mean, listen, I wanted to, I wanted to climb down the seat, so I wanted to climb over the advertising holdings, ask the stewards and the ball boys to excuse me while I walked onto the pitch and donkey punched him in the back of the head when he decided that. Uh, he wasn't Mikel Antonio and that he was Johan Cruyff and decided to try and chip a six foot five, six foot six goalkeeper from about 25 yards out. I, I did want to go down and donkey punch him in the back of the neck. Um, but that's the only bad thing I've got to say about Mikel yeah. Antonio yesterday. He was immense. Um, yeah, he did have, I think it was either Fornells or Lanzini at that moment on that chance breaking in 
to the edge of the box and he mm. could have waited a bit and pulled it back. Um, I think that was from the Declan Rice one, putting Fernandinho under pressure. Yes. And making him pass it back with the wrong foot and he had no purchase on it. And Edison Fell went, over. Edison went, shit! And, but I, I, I thought, Rob, throughout the first half that we were um, – I'll do that, do that one. Um, oh, another yeah, one for you to start. Yeah. I, I just thought that first half we deserved. We were we, we were deserving to be in front at half time. I thought the back line from from Thomas Suchek and Deck, the back four, and, and Fab, all right, he had a he had a bit of a fumble in the first half. I personally thought it was a a little bit of a foul on him, but nothing major. I've seen him given. I've not seen him given. Um, I thought Fab was excellent yesterday, and I'm not just talking about the penalty save. No, no, no. I, I, listen, he commanded. His <coughs> distribution was immense. Um, his constant communication with the back line was fantastic. Um, I do have one issue, and it was it was with Vlad. Throughout both halves, and, and mm-hmm. I discussed it with you Rob, yesterday, Rob. Mm-hmm. When when you've got when you've got a player like Jack Grealish, and especially in the second half, but it, it happened a few times in the second half. They kind of singled out Vladimir Sufal and targeted him with Jack Grealish. Mm. Um, surprised we didn't see Fredericks come on for. Lanzini, if I'm honest, at one point I thought that might have been the change to to double up on 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 Fredericks and maybe move uh, double up on Grealish, sorry, and move um, you know Bowen more centrally. Um, but he kept backing off, Rob. Now my problem with Grealish, okay, um, other than his haircut, other than him being a diamond <laughs> upside down, okay. Now, Kent, Kent, Kent will make me right on this. I know Kent makes me right on this because Kent doesn't watch stats. Kent watches football with his eyes. And Kent will definitely back me up on this. The stats don't do Jack Grealish a great deal of favours when it comes to, um, you know, comparisons with Jared Bowen. Jared Bowen, on stats, his head's and shoulders above Jack Grealish. Now, mm-hmm. um Different uh, styles of players, though, aren't they? They're not. They're not West, stylistically the same. West Ham, West Ham online, an old friend of the channel. Um, he made a comment on on Twitter earlier. Someone had put. Um, I'll just leave this here, and it was the stats and games played for Jared Bowen over the season. And Jared mm. Bowen on stats runs away with it. There, there's no two ways about it. And, and my comment was and will be: if Jack Grealish is worth a hundred million. So is Jared Bowen. Two different stylistically, but you get more of an end product from Jared Bowen than you do from a Jack Grealish. Certainly this season. Jack Grealish will win you free kicks, whether it's through diving or minimal contact, or he gets clattered. That being said, there was my concern with Vladimir Sufal constantly backing off. And I said this to you, Rob, during the game. You don't know. Sorry, Trini, I, I think you're wrong. You, you you can't back off because the problem with Sufal and what Sufal was doing, he was backing off so much he ended up in our box. And at that point, you can't touch him. You can't go near him. I'd rather give free kicks away outside the box and I give away penalties because he gets inside and then you touch him. Mm. We've got the height to be able to deal with with set pieces coming into our box, with Declan Rice, Thomas Suchek, Kurt Zuma, um, Mikhail Antonio, and Michael uh, Michael Craig Dawson. Um, I'm at it again, right? help me. Um, <laughs> you know, we've got enough to be able to deal with those um, with, with those free kicks. I would have rather given away a free kick, you know, over by the touchline where he picks the ball up, rather than backing off, backing off, backing off, ending up in our box, as he did probably, I'd say, about 80% of the time. And then you can't touch him. Then you can't touch him. And and 
How many times, Rob, did we hold our breath standing next to each other where you go, <gasps> okay, it's clear. That was the problem. That was the problem. And, and it, it, it made me feel really uncomfortable that he consistently backed off. Don't get me wrong, it's probably something David Moyes has told him how to play. It's something he's told him what to do. But it still made me uncomfortable. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. What were your thoughts when Grealish got a goal to bring him back into the game? 2-0, um, 2-1. What's the time? Nine o'clock. Uh, it's now nine o'clock. Absolute fucking prick. Right, of all people... Absolute fucking prick. Took a deflection um, off of Craig Dawson, which made it I've, sort of like I've, skip up over Fab as he dived. I've watched the replay because I missed the goal. Okay. Um, I've I've watched I've watched the highlights. I say I've watched the highlights. I've watched the whole game about several times downstairs between mm. uh, eight and five when I was working. Oh, just before you go into that, you do realise you starred a comment earlier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all right. No, it's fine. Oh, it's fine. okay. Oh, In fact, I'll do it. I'll do it. Mr. James, much love, my man. Cheers, much dude. love. Um, to cover that, that at the end, and I'd mm. um, as um, as it was alluded to on another channel earlier, Pep instigated that. Pep was calling Noble over, mm. and he and he made well, he pulled him into an embrace mm. and. It was heartfelt. You could see it was heartfelt. Respect. It, it was. I, I think it even went beyond the realms of respect, Rob. This was a genuine, heartfelt moment between Pep and Nobes, and I wouldn't be surprised if if Nobes doesn't reveal the entirety of what Pep says to him at that moment. Pep hmm, certainly very won't. personal, isn't it? Um, but I thought it was absolute class from Pep. Um, Fantastic. It was a great moment to watch and an agreement there, Bowen. Um, just rewind to the first half, Rob. I just want to say the assist for the first goal from Pablo Fornells tells me that the assist in Europe against Seville when he set up Fornells but when he set up Bowen from that pass, he did exactly the same yesterday with a hooking, swinging pass. Nothing lucky about it. He knew exactly what he was oh, doing yeah. with that. And I personally would go as far to say that is the assist of the season. It was a no-look pass, wasn't it? It was just over, no, over the it, shoulder. It was. It was he, he knew because he already <coughs> looked up. He already looked up, he saw, <laughs> and then he made that pass. Leon, sorry, not Seville. Leon. Thank you, Kent. Um, but it was outstanding. And I wouldn't be surprised if it's the sister of the season. I wouldn't be surprised. It was absolutely magnificent. Won't get it, cause he's not in a top six club. So No, no. Well, he might be at the end of the season. Let's just clear yeah. it out. Yeah. Um, as for their goal, it was very lucky, Rob, I felt. I think Fab saves that if it doesn't. If it doesn't come up off of off, off of big doors, mm. I mean, we scored two own goals yesterday. Let's not back around. They were both own goals um, because the goalkeeper saves the second, saves the first one. If it doesn't take the deflection, and um, he, the, the the second one goes well wide, possibly maybe no one gets in on it, but the second one goes wide. Thank you, my man. Um, so, you know, with the first one, um, to be honest, it's only ever going to be Grealish, I feel. He was, I, I felt he was their danger, man. I felt he was. He, he was getting was a lot their, of the ball, wasn't he? He was their problem. Um, I do believe, ah, you prank people to it. Oh. Um, I was going to cover that at the end, but no, it's fine. Put it back up. I'll, I'll agree with it now. Um, it's a, a, embarrassing. It's embarrassing the fact that Eddie Howe, and I know you had this comment yesterday, Rob, when I mentioned it, but Eddie Howe um, has taken a team from 14th or 18th to 9th. Um, it's, well, they it's, hadn't it's, won in 14, their first 14 hey, games. Hey, listen, it's impressive as a short-term moment and as a snapshot of the season, but for a manager that has been consistent 
got a team to seventh, bordering on sixth, competed mm. in Europe, competed in FA and, and, and League Cups. Oh, he deserves. Moy should, Moy should be in there, no there. question. Hello, beautiful lady. Ah, oh, missed you yesterday. Such a shame. Your aim will improve. Uh, I know. Sniper shot from the uh, <laughs> from the top of the bridge down at Carpenter's, Mister. Um, but no, uh, Grealish with our goal, Rob. He was their danger <laughs> man. I, I felt that it, it was only him where the goal was coming from. Um, and I'm not going to say it was undeserved because I yeah. felt that you know. It was what it was. And Kent, once again, is spot on with that comment as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah definitely. Okay, so 49 minutes in and they go 2-1 or 2-1 down. They, they oh, so the fell back. out. Yeah. Yeah, I was... Uh, I knew what was coming. Yeah. I mean, they, they had a they had a couple of chances immediately uh, thereafter. They had... A, I've just got here minutes 53 and 56. They had a couple of chances. Yeah. One was a Fabianski save. Uh, well, both of them were Fabianski saves, um, in actual fact. One from um, Silva and, and one from Jesus. So they were creating plenty of chances. Kufel then gets a yellow card and so does Fabianski in quick succession. One for um, My... back De Bruyne and one for time-wasting. My... Oh, Rob, how Couldn't did wait, I... could he? How did I go when when he got the yellow... You weren't wasting. very happy, I think it's fair to say. Um, fuming <clears throat> would be a good option. What's my icon, Red? What's going on here? It's not even that way, it's that way. Um, yeah, no, fuming. So pissed off. Like, I, I, I made a comment to you that he was booked for time wasting on the hour mark. Like, mm -hmm. ref, behave yourself, son, because I'm pretty sure. A few weeks ago, uh, when we were playing Arsenal, that <laughs> easy, Pat. Easy. Wait he had a, a good game, well. in fairness. Just wait a minute. <laughs> um, I do believe that Ramsdale was taking up to 18 seconds to release the ball in open play. Mm. Forget goal kicks. Forget goal kicks. He was taking 18 seconds from open play to release the ball from his hands. Now... I've got no time for that. Where's the cons? Oh, I'll tell you where the consistency is. It was because it was for top six base. Um, there's no need for it. Okay. Um, he didn't need to book him. He could have just been adding the minutes on at the end of the game. It wouldn't have made an issue, Rob. He could have let it and carry on because that's just how it works. That's what is the remit of the game. Like you had the seconds on at the tail end of the game. There's no need to be to be booking the goalkeeper. Which goal he certainly did, didn't he? After, one well, after Four minutes after he played seven. Right, it was, he, you know, I'll tell you now, if he could have got away with letting <laughs> them take their throw on and having, them, having one last chance, if he could have got away with it, it's exactly what he would have done. Um, awful, awful. Yeah. Well, then we come to minute 69. There's a free kick. Laporte <laughs> fouled on uh, their left-hand side. Mares whips it in. Oh, dear. Vladimir Kufal. Uh, I mean, listen, I mean, he, was, he was trying to clear it, obviously, but it ends up nestling in the bottom of Fab's net. At that point, you, you and I looked at each other and it was like, oh, shit. There it is. There it is. Maybe there he did. It is. No, maybe he didn't. He did. I've seen no he didn't. I've seen the highlights, Rob. And no, but um, how can you tell? Because you can see Fab's mouth doesn't move. You can see Fab says absolutely Jack Diddley squat. Maybe he's a ventriloquist. Uh, <laughs> um <laughs> Sufel. Uh, yeah, he, I mean, listen, it's bollocks, and, and you can see it broke his heart because of the way he was laying on the turf. Yeah. Um it was heartbreaking for him. What I will Seems say like is, shit, I, I do believe, Robert, there was a free kick in the build-up to West Ham that was not given. Surprise, surprise. There was, I'm pretty sure. We're on about on Antonio. Had... Yep. Yep. Yeah. Should have been a free kick and it wasn't given. They they get to where they are and, <clears> and free kick is given to, to them. And you're like, no, no, there's your bias involved again. It's a free kick to West Ham. 20 seconds later, it's a free kick to City. Eight seconds after that, it's 2-2. Two, two. Uh, again, 
the referee has followed his remit to the book. It's stop West Ham, give a free, and, and do what you can to help them score. He did that. No, I see, I can't, dis- I, I can't agree with that. I can't agree with that. I, I, I just can't. Sorry. Everyone's got an opinion. No, and that's fine. And I, and, and I appreciate you yeah. putting his comment up there for me to go, Absolutely. no, I don't agree with it. That's, that's fine. And he doesn't agree with what I'm saying because I yeah. think the foul was very unfortunate and I thought we had a good game yesterday other than backing off. Um, but again, that's probably something he's been told to do. <laughs> that's, 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 uh, you may say that, Pat. I could not possibly comment. I so will two, agree two, and 60, I say 60, I can. So 2-2, two, two, 69 minutes in and... They they were starting to sort of crank up the the pressure. There was there was a few good few chances that that came to pass, and obviously we we discussed Antonio had the had the chance earlier at two one. Had that gone in, made it three one. I rather fancy the game would have very probably, but not definitely, but very probably have been over at that point had had Antonio taken that chance. But you you just you know it two two, and you're thinking ah shit. We're, we're in trouble here. Um, I think Newcastle, Newcastle just scored. Have scored. <laughs> I think Newcastle have just scored. For those of you watching that are not aware why my wife is cheering a Newcastle goal, it's not because she's a Newcastle fan. She's a Tottenham fan. So anyway. Right. Okay. So because she was a fucking idiot. Well, there is that. Listen, you can That's say that. That's she I married can't. you. Well, there you go. There you go. Love there you. was... We we got to 85th minute though, didn't we, Duke? And you referenced Anthony Taylor earlier as I did. Uh yeah, he didn't give it on on the pitch, but obviously the VAR is in his lug hole. Go and have a look, Anthony. Have a look at the screen. And as soon as he walked over, we both knew, didn't we? Because we said to one another, This is a penalty. And oh. and to be fair, we saw, we've seen it since and, and, and it was. we both agree it yep. was a penalty. Yep, it was. Um in hindsight. Um, but again, it's one of those VAR moments where it's, it's one of them moments where when he's not giving it on the pitch, is it a clear and obvious error? Not. <laughs> oh, I do love her back there. She's she's whipping up a, a broth in her cauldron, eye of newt and skin of snake and shit. I can hear it. Um, it's not a clear and obvious error for me, Rob, on the pitch. Right? It doesn't have to be. No, 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 it does. It does. No, it doesn't. That's what, not no. with penalties. No. No. You're wrong. Trust me. You're wrong. I know, but I don't care. A clear and obvious error, right? For me, it wasn't one. Because in in live action and actual play, it's it's not a penalty. As you're watching it without the without the aid of replays, okay, without the aid of slowing it down to get what you need from it, okay, then it's Burnley, not... perhaps Walshy, Wolves, Watford, Palace, Norwich. Have Palace got box seats? <laughs> it's a block of flats behind the main stand. Um, Last time I went there, there is Sainsbury's. Yeah, well, that's that's the that's the VIP section. Um, (laughs) um, yeah, for me, I know we've discussed this over and over again, Rob, that it's not the clear and obvious error on penalties is is not part of it. But I don't think the referee made a clear and obvious error on that. And the fact that VAR felt the need to get involved tells me about... Now, listen... I'm not saying they didn't get it wrong, Kent. I'm not saying they got it wrong. I'm not. I'm saying they got it right. It was a penalty. Yes, it was. But what I'm saying is, for me, it wasn't a clear and obvious error by the referee, as in watching it in real time. Yes, you can make a case for anything. In in um, you can make it. Uh, you can make case for anything in slow mo, and when you can make a tweak and move things when you need to, of course you can. I e, I exactly. You can do all of that, right? Um, you know, a few years ago, um, James Milner was eighty-seven yards offside. Um, <laughs> yeah, he was. He was in a car park outside, wasn't he? Pretty sure he got a cab to where he needed to be, and Uber. 
Yeah, it was, a, it was an 87 pound Uber ride. And Liverpool was given a goal. Now, the only reason that VAR looked at it and it was given is because it benefited a top six side. No, they shouldn't have, Sharky. No, they shouldn't <laughs> I knew you wouldn't agree. Okay. Uh, Mr. Warnock. Seen given, no. Mr. Warnock and Dermot Gallagher on Sky said, no, um, it shouldn't have been a penalty. He kind of jumped. And as he landed, obviously, his leg was bent. He didn't swing his foot at the back of Jesus. We covered this. Um, it wasn't a penalty. And, and a former referee says so. So I'm in agreement with him. Um, it was a penalty. I'm not saying the second one wasn't a penalty. Okay, quite clearly, <coughs> as Trini says, um, Trini, not, that's Trini Hammer. Not Trini, Trini Hammer. I'm guessing that's Trini, pretty dad. Trini, yeah. Um, you know, that um, it was a penalty. I thought he got his foot to the ball. Slow it down. You can see that it wasn't. Um, VAR giveth. VAR taketh away. Um, you know, you, you saw Bowen's two goals. He looks over his shoulder to make sure that um, he was on side. I, I, I wouldn't have been surprised to see a VAR try and disallow both those goals because of said bias. Um, mm. But I'm telling you now, if that was in West Ham's favour in the 84th minute, Rob, and West Ham had got a penalty... Guarantee that ain't going to VAR. Guarantee that ain't going to be a West Ham penalty. I have someone who was a regular in my pub that comes from Trini. Trinidad and Tobago. His, yeah. his name was Shiva. This might even be him, actually. I don't know. His, name was, his name was Shiva Bissam, and he's gone back home. Um, he, ah. he, he was here from December 25th uh, to March 28th, maybe, I think. And he went home. Um, yeah, I, 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 I guarantee you that wouldn't have been in West Ham's favour. Um, Thanks, Pat. Appreciate it. I think the crew I find in the live chat of this channel is the bollocks. All oh, right, okay. He's That's talking the about the it's live chat. I thought, I was, I was yeah, no, 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 no. No, he's not I, saying I, it's bollocks. He's saying I, think, it's yeah, I thought he was saying this is all the bollocks. I'm like, huh? What have we done? Okay, that's fine. Um... Yeah, I mean, again, if it goes the other way, Rob, it's not a penalty. Yeah. It, you know, but, something was done there. It was it was used to find a way to help City win. But again... But it didn't help because Fab did his thing. Fourth save in six this season. That's incredible. Um, mate, I won't lie to you, right? And I kept my mouth shut when I was standing next to you, right? Because I didn't want to fucking jinx it. I was confident he was going to save it. It wasn't, was I've, I've seen penalties hit worse than that. It was, it, it was, was a, listen, it was a good pen, but good it was, light, a, though. yeah, but it was a great save, Rob. And I'll tell you why. And I've watched it back. <laughs> yeah, it's bad. true. It's true. We do. Well, I do. He's charged. I do. He's all right. I, I talk absolute bucket loads of it. Um, It was a great save. It was a good height. Don't get me wrong. No. But it was a great save. And I'll tell you why it was a great save, Rob. Right? He didn't kind of palm it and it bounces back to the, the, the taker. Mm. He got this bit onto it. It was yep. it was a it was kind of a fisty get away. He gave and it he a got, fisting. He, he gave it a good fisting. And because of that, he got some. He got some speed, not distance. He didn't get distance on it, but he got pace and speed on the ball that put it back towards our on-rushing players. Because if he doesn't get a good bit of power behind that, that lands back at Mahrez's feet and he obviously then tucks it away. It's the fact that he got enough power on it that gave it some pace to get back to... <laughs> to get back to where Cresswell was that allowed Cresswell to race in. Hmm. That's what made that not just a good save. That made that a great save, Rob, because he put it in an area where it gave West Ham players the, uh, the, the, the chance of getting back to then give it a clear. That's what made that a great save. Um, 
But I was confident that he was going to save it. I was confident he was going to. Kept my mouth shut. I stood there. Um, I was dejected that it had been given. Mm. Yeah. But it was a good save, as, as Trini Hammer says. He obviously did his homework because Definitely. he scored three times. But then I, I called this during the penalty shootout the day before <clears throat> uh, Liverpool um, Chelsea. Um, you know, if the goalkeepers are clever, uh, well, I, I don't know. They've got VAR, Kent. No, only in the final. Oh, it's only in the final. Oh, only in the final. It's not in bollocks. the semis. Not in the semis. You don't get a VAR semi, no? Don't get a VAR semi, mate. (sighs) Okay, let's... That's how the match finished, but I want to reference something that took place. It it didn't sadly happen quite when I said it would. He got on in the 77th minute, not in the 74th. I think that's but. because it was there was a, there was a, the ball didn't go out of play quick enough, Rob. Yeah, <laughs> that was the issue. Um, that was I was, cl- I was close. On. I got it yeah. close, didn't I? Yeah. On came for the last time at home, the club captain, uh, something of a of a a hero, a West Ham modern day hero in Mark Noble. Now. I'm going to pay for what it's worth a little bit of a tribute to this man, if I may. This is a guy that, from the age of, I think it's 11, has been at the club. And he he had been at Arsenal before. Um, everybody makes mistakes. But he was, he was always a West Ham fan. He was a Canning Town lad, brought up in a family of West Ham fans and all the rest of it. And... He probably had dreams and aspirations of turning out for the first team maybe a couple of times, and he'd have probably been happy with that. He went on to make, as of right now, 549 appearances in all competitions. He's been captain of the club since 2015, and he's seen us promoted. He's seen us relegated. He's seen us in a cup final. He's seen us in Europe. Um, and he is, he has not only been a captain, a player, he's been a fan for all of that. And he played those last 13 minutes plus stoppage time yesterday. And then we obviously came off, everything got prepared for the ceremony and Ben Shepard and he had the little chat and there was the montage that was on the screen and That's the last time we will see him on the pitch in a claret and blue strip at home. And I remember his debut and it's gone in the blink of an eye. And when he said about, I just hope I made you proud. I've got to be honest. There was a lump right there. I was like, wow, honestly, Um, Mark Noble, I don't know if you if you get a chance to see what I'm about to say. Listen, you don't know me from Adam, and that's fine. Um, but I'd just like to say, on behalf of me, on behalf of pretty much every West Ham fan that I know that's worth their salt, thank you. Thank you for your service. Thank you for your your leadership. Thank you for everything you've brought to the party from, like I say, seeing us through relegations, seeing us through cup disappointments, European campaigns, moving home, et cetera, et cetera. And living the dream that every single one of us would like to have had the opportunity to do, you did it. And we were with you every step of the way. And whatever the next chapter in your career, and I'm I'm sure you will still be with the club, in some capacity. And I just hope that the next chapter in your life fulfills you. It will never replace playing. It never will. Any professional footballer that you talk to says that nothing quite replaces playing. Whether you go into management, whether you go into coaching, whether you become a pundit, whatever. Nothing quite replaces playing the game but I hope whatever you find 
go some way to filling that particular void in your life. And I wish you a happy retirement from football. And it's, in my opinion, a great travesty that you were not given the courtesy at some point, and certainly in season 2015-16, if I may be so bold, that at no point were you given the courtesy of a call-up for your country that you, in my opinion, thoroughly deserved. Thoroughly deserved. And if I may also say that there was an interview that I once heard with Mark Noble or a, an article that, that was attributed to him because Mark Noble could have played for the Republic of Ireland. And he was asked, why didn't he? And he said, and I'm, I'm, I'm going from memory here, but my recollection of it, this interview, was that he said that he never grew up idolising players like John Aldridge, Ray Houghton, Kevin Sheedy, Roy Keane, Robbie Keane, yada, yada, yada. He grew up idolising David Platt, Paul Gascoigne, Gary Lineker, Alan Shearer, da, 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 da. And he didn't think that it would be morally correct for him to represent the Republic of Ireland and take away the dreams and aspirations of someone that had grown up idolising those players. And I think to myself, what a guy. What a guy. He forgot, he he put to one side maybe 20, 30, 40, 50 caps for the Irish national side. Out of principle. What a guy. Uh, yeah, uh, there's, there's, to be honest, there's nothing I'm going to say, Rob, that, that's, that's going to top that. I am going to. I am going to say my bits. Um, I mean, I was there for his for his testimonial. Um, you know, I'm sick and tired of seeing you know the, the, the fans of, of opposition sides that are, that are giving it all to Charlie Big Bollocks about Noble not being a one man side, one club man because he he was a whole sharp, he was sharp, sharp. Um. Mark Noble, I mean, you're gonna you're gonna hear a lot of it over the next um, over the next couple of months, over the next um, year or so, about what Mark Noble meant to a lot of people, individually, collectively, as fans. Um, you know, he referred to the sixty thousand at the stadium yesterday that that we were family. You know, and. And that's how I feel. That's 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 how I feel with with you guys in the chat and, and Rob with you and and everyone else. It, 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 it's a it's a close knit setup that we are. And you know, I watched that man yesterday. At points, he looked broken. Okay, at points, he looked a broken man. Sat there uh, on the side of the pitch at one point. You know, coming out before the game, you could see in his face that that this was that this was taking an effect on him. It was a, it was, it was a. He, he could have left. He could have left for money and gone elsewhere. Um, okay. Especially when it was quite clear that he wasn't going to win anything with this club. You know, we got close in 06. You know. But he was never going to win anything with his club. But that that wasn't that wasn't what this was about. Um, he was here for love. He was here because this was him. This, this this club was him. It fit him to a T. It was everything that he wanted to be and everything that he was. And you know, to me, Mark Noble was um, and and will be for many many years the epitome of our club but yeah i'm going cyber so I, I can't wait to see that man pull on an england shirt um this this man was was everything that, that west ham was and is for me you know he lived our dream rob as, as you said he he got to go out there in a west ham shirt and not just play one or two games. He, you know, comes come Sunday. He's played five hundred and fifty games, and that puts him in some very, 
very elite company. Elite company. You know, the likes of um, Bobby Moore, the likes of Billy Bonds and Frank Lampard Jr. And you and I were, were having a having a conversation as we well, left. He's sixth on the all-time list of appearance makers. Yeah. With the appearance that he made yesterday, he before that he was he was level with Jimmy Ruffle, which if if those of you know your history of the club, Jimmy Ruffle at one point was the record appearance maker for the club. And yeah. it he only was knocked off of top spot when Bobby Moore played his 549th match. And obviously, latterly, Frank Lampard went past him. Alvin Martin went past him. Billy Bonds went past him, etc. But he's he's now sixth on the all-time list, Mark Noble. There's there's only five players in our history that are ahead of him in terms of appearances made, and they are Alvin Martin, Trevor Brookings, Bobby Moore, Frank Lampard Sr. and Billy Bonds. And as I say, elite company. Mm. You know, we the, the man... As as James says in the next comment, Rob, Noble shows that loyalty is and being remembered, and, and and I don't even think being remembered is part of that. But Noble shows loyalty is more important than any trophy. And what I will say is, I love Mark Noble for that. Mm. I'm, I'm getting, I, I can feel myself getting choked up and I can feel myself getting a bit teary eyed mm. because I can't, I can't overstate what the man meant to me as a, as a West Ham fan over, over the last 18 years. You know, they, they showed the goals up there yesterday, Rob, and, um, the goal against Spurs and then you watch mm -hmm. him cry at the end of the game, yeah. that's what that meant to the man. You know, there was another one, if I may, you, because that was that was. I think that's the one most people remember. But I'll tell you another one that, for me, epitomises Mark Noble in in terms of what the club meant to him. And it was when Bobby Zamora scored the goal that took us up at the playoff final in 05. Who Comes was it that jumped on a Bobby to uh, Bobby yeah. Zamora's back? Yeah, it was Mark Noble, who would have been yeah. about 17 then. Um, yeah, I mean, listen, um, again, I've the goosebumps, teary eyed. Um, you know, I remember that goal, uh, that, that <clears> game, <throat> that game was the catalyst for our survival, I feel, even though we lost. It showed us that we could play. Um, I remember his goal um, against Bolton, set up by Carlos mm. Tevez, you know, chip cross to the back post. The volley, the, the the goal against Leicester was in there. Yep. Watford. Uh, the, the, one that, the one that trickles into the bottom bins. Yeah. Yep. There are I I have I have so many. I have so many um Mark Noble memories. And I hope one day, Rob maybe 10 years, 12 years, that you and I um, go to another event mm. where I got that from. And I I get to meet Mark Noble. Well, you've and spoken I, to him, haven't you? Yeah, I have. I have. <laughs> I, I, I spoke to him on the phone. More than I've managed. Um, I spoke to him on the phone. What I will say is I, I wish I could have told him then what I want to tell him now. You know, um, you know, as as Happy says, he he got to say, um, you know, ah, I'm gonna go. I can feel it. I can feel it. Just the words that are in my throat, and I can feel myself getting all all emotional with it. He turned around and, and you know, he he said over the last 18 years, I hope I did you all proud. Mm. And that I'm I'm there now. That did me last night. That did me, and I've watched it back as Happy says, and oh, I can't have it. It's not like I've lost a member of my family, is it? Um, it's the fact that he he, he, just, he said, I hope I made you all proud, and that's what got me. It wasn't the, um, it wasn't the, um, 
you know, the 60,000, that kind of got me to the edge. What pushed me over was when he said, I, I, I hope I did you all proud. Um, he did. I, I will say, Mark, if you ever come across this at some point in your career, you know, in your retirement, that, mate, you did. You, you Listen, you lived the dream and we lived it through you. Everything that you did. We all I, wanted to be you. I, I mate. Without a doubt, I, I said to you the other day um, that when I watched Stuart Slater play in the school playground, I wanted to be Stuart Slater and later lead Julian Dix. Um, if I was to play five-a-side football now, I'd want to be Mark Noble hmm. because um, the man did everything with his heart on his sleeve and his chest and that he was everything that I, I I want to be as a fan. He, he got to, I got to live my life through him. And um, you know what, Mark Noble, thank you. Um, I love everything you've done for the club. I love you as a, as a human being and, and as a man. And I'm glad that I got to, um, that I got to witness that man's career in my lifetime. People say we got to see Messi. People say we got to see Ronaldo. I'm glad I got to see Mark Noble. I'm glad I got to see what that what it meant to that man to play for our club. And uh, yeah, uh, uh, yeah, I'm done. Sorry. Yeah, he's he's one of a a very rare breed. I know you referenced people say he wasn't a one club man because he had a couple of loan spells out. No, I d I don't take any notice of that because it's like they were just borrowing him. He was going out and getting his first team experience and. He was fundamentally, he was still when he made those appearances for Hull City and Ipswich Town it, at the beginning of his career, which totaled five appearances for Hull City in the championship and 13 appearances for Ipswich Town in the championship. So he's made 567 career appearances for, as I say, but 18 of those were for Hull and Ipswich. But fundamentally, he was employed was by West his, Ham United. Say, where was his contract? And, and yeah, exactly. So, um, <laughs> I, 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 I don't take any notice <laughs> of that. Um, he, he was West Ham from start to finish. Done. And always will be. Yeah. Always yeah. will be. Right. So, all, all that being said, something as well as, like I say... Mark Noble's retirement now also happened. And I'll just draw your attention to the Premier League table, ladies and gentlemen, which, as you can see there, we are now guaranteed seventh as a result of the win, coupled with Wolverhampton Wanderers only drawing at home with Norwich City means that we, at the very least, will finish seventh which therefore means that we have guaranteed European football next season. Now, whether that is the Conference League or the Europa League remains to be seen, but I'm fairly happy with if we get Conference League. I've not got no problem with that. Yes, obviously, it would be fantastic if we get an upgrade and we get into the Europa League for a second consecutive season, but I wouldn't turn my nose up at the Conference League. And if it means that I'm going to pack my suitcase and I'm going to go to down, downtown Baku in Azerbaijan, that's fine. It's a, it's an experience. So, but I it'd be that. quite nice to get it'd be quite <laughs> nice to get Europa League again. I can't lie, especially especially at the expense of Manchester United. So, yeah, I mean. I tell you, you want to deal? You've you've started start a couple of comments. I see. I'm gonna I'm gonna take you're gonna them, go for it. I'm gonna take them in the order that they are. Cool. Now, you and I had this this conversation as we come out of the stand, and and you know, Joe, my other half, she was um, kind of in agreement with what you were saying. And as I said to you, I'm I'm kind of on the fence and can be swung both ways. But after after the last 10 minutes of, of us two speaking about the man, um, I agree with cyber. Okay. I, I, I do agree with cyber. I've, I've kind of been pushed back to where my initial thoughts lie and that the final stand 
that, that listen, something needs to be done to immortalise the man around that stadium, regardless of um, regardless of my next my, my my not my next comment, the one that follows. Um, mm-hmm. I, I you stick a statue up all you want. Um, you can retire his number if you feel it necessary. Yes! I think that's two nil Newcastle, or it could be the end of the game. No, it's two nil Newcastle. <laughs> trust me, I I know my wife's sort of noises. Um, okay, we'll yes, leave that there. I know her noises. <laughs> <laughs> you just get you sort of like in tune with it sort of like after what 24 right. 25 years uh, yeah we'll leave that one alone um i mean listen i did a video i did a video eight months ago whether you retire the number or whether you name the stand i i honestly to god can't remember what i said in the video <laughs> i can't remember whether i said retire the mm. number name the stand fuck it do both i mean well, listen, they did with Bobby Moore. Listen, number but. sixteen. Listen, number sixteen isn't necessarily a shirt that a player would necessarily go for. What I will say now is, any kid coming through that club, knowing what that man meant, will want mm. sixteen. If you don't retire it, um, you could same could be said for forty-one with Deckers. You know, it's. I I I know your argument for for naming it the Frank Lampard Senior Stand. Yes, um, because of his you know, his appearances <clears throat> oh, and his it, his longevity at the club. Yeah, I mean, I, I tell you, I'll lay my cards on the table now. Frank Lampard Senior is who I should think should be the recipient of that honour. Now, I know that some people will recoil in horror, but please let me state my case: Frank Lampard Senior. And the only reason that people recoil in horror is because he shares the name with his son. And there's all sorts of negative connotations there. But Frank Richard George Lampard, to give him his full title. Okay, now he started his youth career in 1963 with West Ham, which lasted four years. He then signed his pro forms in 67 and was in the first team from 67 to 85. He had one season at South End United before he retired. He made, in total, for the club, in all competitions, 670 appearances, only bettered by Billy Bonds. Now, Billy Bonds, Frank Lampard, rather, um, would have been the captain of West Ham after the departure of Bobby Moore. Ron Greenwood is on record of having said so. The reason that Frank Lampard never got that accolade is because Frank Lampard Sr. had made um, reference to possibly moving on. So Ron Greenwood said, OK, well, that being the case, I can't make you captain, so I'll give it to Billy Bonds and the rest is history. Had he kept his mouth shut, it's not inconceivable that it would have been Frank Lampard Sr. Lift, lifting two FA Cups in 75 and 80 and not Billy Bonds. But th- history went the way that it did. But that being said, Frank Lampard is still one of only three individuals in the club's history to have won two FA Cup winners medals. And two of them have stands named after them. And they are Sir Trevor Brooking and Billy Bonds. The third member of that particular collection of individuals is Frank Lampard Sr. And he doesn't have a stand named after him. And that's just just my point of view. Like I say, he's second on the all-time list. He's an academy graduate. He was at the club for many, many years. Also served as a coach and assistant manager. And as I say, one of only three people to have two FA Cup winners medals, but doesn't have any stand named after him. Doesn't have any, doesn't have anything named after him to the best of my knowledge. I don't think that there's a suite at London Stadium that's named the Frank Lampard Suite. And as I said to your missus yesterday, the only reason why he hasn't got anything named after it, in my opinion, is because of his son. If his son was named Dave Lampard, fine. No one would give a shit. But because his son's also called Frank Lampard, everyone's like, you can't call it the Frank Lampard stand. We'll call it the Frank Senior stand then. Then it differentiates. 
That's just my take on it. I'm not saying that Mark Noble's not done enough to be considered in in being named that naming the stand after him. I'm not saying he shouldn't be in the conversation. I just happen to be of the opinion that Frank Lampard Sr. should also be in the mix. Listen, I said to you yesterday, I don't disagree with what you were saying. I said yesterday that I can be on a on a fence. I'm just thinking right now where I'm at, the mindset, my absolute love of a man that, you know, I've witnessed I've witnessed all of his career, Rob. I think that's I think that's the key mm. right there. I think that is the key. Um, yeah, you've got that, more protection obviously with those than you have with Frank Yeah, C. I, and I, I think we, I think we all have, Rob. All of us our age are gonna have more of a connection yeah. with 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 Mark. I mean um if I may, um you know James here says Mark Noble's a modern day legend, and in thirty years' time, we still will remember Mark Noble. And I and listen, yes. I don't disagree with that. In the same way that we're still talking about Bobby and and you know Alvin Martin, Frank Lampard, you know uh, Billy Bonds, we're still going to be talking about Mark Noble. There, there's no two ways about it. Um, mm. Cyber. I, I took Joe yesterday, Cyber. The kids, uh, the kids stayed at home. Cyber actually said, "Hammerhead." See, that's what I do. But again, what's the importance? Uh, again, uh, see, you go back when when Bobby Ooh. Moore played. You go back when Bobby Moore played. The numbers were one to eleven. Can I also just what's point out, and this is this is going back to Friday, do what we yes. went to Friday evening. Yes. And I again, I, I probably should mention this because th this again is is a an ingredient to Mark Noble, the man, Mark Noble, the West Ham fan, as opposed to Mark Noble, the player that we've all basically witnessed. That we we know Mark Noble, the player. But this was an interesting story in the home changing room at London Stadium, and this was Brian Deer, I think, that said this, wasn't it, on Friday night? I'm sure it was Brian Deer that. that gave this piece of information out it was it was the same. in the middle you've got you've got all of the the little sort of like the recessed bits into the wood paneling and all that and you've got all the shirts hung up you know you've got number one fabianski you've got number five kufel da 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 da, da right but in the middle of all of these is a number six shirt bobby moore obviously that was done at the behest of Mark Noble. Mark Noble ensured that that was there and remains there for anyone that comes into the club for the first time into the changing room. There in the middle is a number six claret and blue shirt. What's that all about? That, that is the standard that you are expected to try and emulate. Because that is Bobby Moore, and that was done by Mark Noble. Just tells you the just tells tells you the level of the man, Rob. Tells you the level of the man. Um, regardless of of how we go about it, okay. Uh, what I don't want to see is a really fucking that That's I an don't interesting mind, idea, James. That I don't mind. I can get behind that. What I don't want to see is a. Um, I don't want to see a dodgy statue like the one that they made of Cristiano Ronaldo at the airport. Do you remember that? Fucking look like it'd been hit with a fucking shovel or something. Have you that know, at I London don't... City Airport. Yeah, I, I don't want to see a Mark Noble one looking fucking or Canning Town tube, tube Station. I tell you what, I, I'd rather pay Canning Town Len to be able to do, <laughs> uh, do a statue of Mr. Mark. I really would. And I'm going to close it with my comments, of my starred comments. This is the last mm. starred comment I have of the evening, Rob. Okay. And you know what? I've I've seen shit like this banded around for for so long. Um, I've seen morons get these. I've seen people that don't deserve uh, that's the Jared Bowen comment, I think. They can have him for mm -hmm. about... Listen, if Grealish goes to City for 100 million, Liverpool can have Jared Bowen for the same price. 
Um, I've, I've seen morons within sport for services to sport, etc. Get oh. one of these, and I think Cyber's right, Rob. Hmm. I, I, well, not, and it's not just a sport, but it's also to the local community, hmm. um, because the man obviously does a hell of a lot. You, you saw, we all saw what the man did for for the Caton family, um, hmm. for Young Isla. Um, what he did during lockdown? I, I, I'm getting stupid again. Can we stop? Um, for everything the man's done for his services to sport, for his services hmm. to charity. For his services to the local community. I mean, I've, yeah. I've seen a, I've seen a, I've, I've seen a seventy-five-year-old lollipop lady get a, a, an MBE or an OBE um, for standing and, and helping young children cross um, cross the road for fifty years of her career, and again, admirable. And I've seen. Uh, hey, listen, I, I'm not knocking. I'm not knocking Rashford for getting an MBE. He did so much um, for hmm. underprivileged children, yeah. Um, especially during the lockdown. So I'm certainly not going to knock um, Marcus Rashford for for getting one. But there are so many awards that have been given that are just absolute turd and dog shit. When you compare to what Mark Noble has done mm-hmm. for services to sport, for services to his local community, and for his services to charity. Um, I I can't say that Scott Venn, um, it has a banging ring to it, Scott. I, I won't lie to you, but I don't think... Not going to happen, is it? ...that he is going to be given a knighthood. No. I'm still waiting on Bobby to receive. <laughs> I don't think they can give knighthoods out posthumously. posthumously. I, know. I think they can and, do with MBEs and stuff, but not you know, knighthoods. Um, he listen, Bobby Moore should have been knighted the, the, the day that he lifted that Agreed. Fucking, that World Cup. Agreed. Um, but I, I agree that that with Cyber and, and everyone else that's stating that you know Mark Noble should receive an MBE, as I say, services to to football, services to charity, and like maybe so, he when, will in the, in the in the New Year's Honours list. Who knows? I, I tell you what, I, w- I would be one. I would be one person um, that certainly would campaign for that. Um, that's me. Maybe we'll set up a petition, Rob. Maybe, maybe. Now we've got we've got uh player ratings to do, my friend. Yep, let's do it. There they are, ladies and gentlemen, the heroes that started yesterday's match that secured in Mark Noble's last home match in Claret and Blue, our qualification for a second successive season into European competition. So let's start with the custodian, Lucas Fabianski. Talk to me, Duke. We'll give him a seven. And you guys, sorry, Duke, and you guys in the live chat, please get involved with this as well. We want your input too. Sorry, mate. We'll give him a seven. Um, okay. He made he made, some, made a couple of good saves, uh, mm-hmm. the penalty being one, and, and I remember there was one low down. He got a really good solid hand to. Yep. Um, I think he. I think he. Other than the Sufal goal, I think he. I think he commanded. I think he. Um, okay, Ken. A lot of communication. Cheers, Ken. Thank you, my man. Um, I think he made a lot of uh, some, uh, his communication with his 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 defenders. His defenders were was on point. Other than obviously the the Sufal OG, um, and his distribution was on point. I'm going to give him a seven. Mm-hmm. Um, and the reason I'm going seven is there was a point in the first half where I shit my pants when he, he lived up to his nickname of old Flappy Hansky. Flappy Hansky because yeah. there was a moment in the first half where he came out and my arsehole went because um, because he did flap. But I'm going to give it, listen, it's a seven for me. Um, and, and that's where I'm at. Fair, fair. Okay. Uh, talk to me about Aaron Cresswell. Um, I don't think he had a huge amount to do, Rob, in the grand scheme of things. Um, mm-hmm. A lot of their attacks came with Grealish down the other side. I think you know, he was it's commendable. Um, he put in a shift. Um, 
gonna give him I'm gonna give him a six and that's not a bad score it's above average average is the five it's an above average score I just I, it, it, yeah that's all I got for you uh, you were like a it's, it's, it's a so-so yeah, yeah. I mean, listen, he did his job. He didn't have a, yeah, he did, and he didn't have a great deal to do. So it was more mm. of the backing up of the two centre backs, and obviously, yeah. as Soufal was being pulled from pillar post by Grealish, he kind of dropped in to create that. Dawson, you shift over a little bit. Some me and Zooms are coming in. Um, yeah, that's where I'm at with that. I'll give him a six. Fair enough. Uh, Vladimir Kufal, who unfortunately got the the OG that equalised for City. I'm going to give him a, 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 a six. Um, mm-hmm. the, the OG does take it down. The the backing off and allowing Grealish to get into the box does take it down um, mm-hmm. because that put us under a little bit more pressure than it needed to. Yeah. Again, I don't know whether that's the remit that comes from above and, and Mr. Moyes. But, uh, yeah, you know what? I think... For the most part, he dealt with it okay. Um, he did, you know, once he'd got into the box, I don't think he dived in. He wasn't mm, a bit harsh. Um, I don't think he, he I wasn't it's silly. No, yeah, no, it's fine. Um, you know, he didn't dive in. He didn't make any silly challenges. He wasn't rash once Grealish did get into the box. So I would, uh, I would, I would say, yeah, I'm going to give him a six. Okay, Kurt Zuma. Oh, mate, he got better as the game went on. Yes. As the game went on, he he got he grew into himself. He was superb. Um, I'm actually going to give him an eight. Um, I thought he was solid. He was just absolutely, you know, as I say, um, I think from the guys, um, oh, that's a bit harsh. I wouldn't say he tore him a new one. I think he I think gave he him has, gave him a bit of gave work. Him a in time, yeah. Agreed. time, agreed. I wouldn't say he gave him a new one. Um, <coughs> um, yeah, I'll give Zooms an eight. Um, I think okay. Hamish Chat actually stated that um, we made 20 blocks as a team um, and those 20 blocks were 20 saves that Fabianski didn't have to make and I think Zuma was responsible um, for three of those. So, um, yeah, eight. Fair enough. Craig Dawson? Eight. Um, again, I think he supported Sufal really well um, when they needed to go out and double up once Grealish had got towards the box or into the box. Um, uh, I think he, again, was another one that made, um, you know, a, a few blocks, was solid. Scott, I don't agree with you. It was the pen. Um, but, Nate. I've seen him given, in fairness to Scott. I, have. I said earlier, I've seen him I given. Have, but it wasn't. So there you go. Even, well, it, was, even, it wasn't in, in, in the match. And even, so. and even Dermot Gallagher said so. So, no, 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 no. Yeah, but I heard an interview with Mark Halsey where he disagrees with Dermot Gallagher. Yeah, but Mark Halsey also said that, you know, referees cunts. So, we'll leave it there. <laughs> he did. Well, he didn't, he, didn't, he didn't use that exact terminology. Hey, listen, I am reading between the lines and putting it into context. All right. Okay. Okay. Talk to me about the skipper. At the, at the starting lineup, anyway, until minute 77. Uh, Declan Rice. If I may just quickly go back, I agree with what the boys, uh, both James and Scott, have said there about losing points for the penalty. He would have actually got a nine for me. That's He lost that point from a nine down to a. It wasn't a silly penalty. Um, I, I personally think the penalty was bought. Um, He's not getting to the ball. If you really want to go there, is it a goal-scoring opportunity? No, it's not. Um, but, yeah, he would have been a nine. Uh, he, he gets an eight because of the penalty. Yeah. Okay. Thomas Socek had a rest last week. Did the rest do him the world of good, do you think? Oh, didn't it just? The man comes back with an eight. Um, I, I I thought he was dangerous in both boxes today, uh, yesterday, Rob. Um, mm-hmm. He was, especially when we went forward, I do believe he was the one that got a nod down in their box. I do believe he was the one that won the ball that gave it to Antonio, for <clears throat> Antonio to hook it um, mm-hmm. for uh, for Jared to race onto for, for the second. Um, I, I, I just think 
and he was a beast at the back as well. I think he got three blocks in. Um, I'm going to go with an eight. I, I think the rest did him the world of good. Fair, fair. In the numbers 10 position, Manuel Lanzini. Have we missed deck or are you coming round to deck? I did I did deck earlier. Did I? What did I, I said, give you? I said Declan Rice. Well, okay. We'll go. I did say Declan Rice, the captain on, on the starting 11 until minute 77, but... Eight. You you bypassed it. So. Eight. Eight. Eight for, eight for Deck. Eight for Tom. I, I just think defensively they were absolutely outstanding. Both boys, um, you know, I, I do believe he's going to go home and take um, KDB out of his back pocket. Um, the reason, <laughs> I give him an eight. The reason that he doesn't get any, any higher marks is because I didn't see much of him going forward because we didn't have the opportunity to go forward. If he, if he could have developed going forward, then, you know, I, I just think that, you know, we if, he, if he'd had a couple of them lung-busting runs, um, I just think he was solid at the back. I'm going to give him an eight. Fair, Same fair. So okay, so, Tom yeah. On the other side. Okay, so back to Lanzini. Five. Oh, harsh. Um, and I just think, listen, I, I didn't see a great deal of him. Um, he tracked back and he, he, he tried to become an outlet. It's an average score, five. He tracked back. He tried to he, he tried to be an outlet where it needed to be and was just a body that was getting in the way at times and mm. and. and, and making Man City change their passing lanes because he came in and dropped in to create it um, a three. But like Scott says, you didn't really notice much else from him. Like I say, he came in, he dropped in, he cut off certain passing lanes. But other than that, there, there really wasn't much else out of it. I'm not saying it was a bad performance. I'm just saying that he that there wasn't really much else out there for him because we didn't see enough of the ball for him to be able to make an impact. Okay, fair enough. Um... Talk to me about Pablo Fornells, who's got one of the assists. Going to give him a six. Okay. Um, the extra point comes from that assist. It would have been a five. Again, it was it was one of those um, it was one of those Lanzini type performances where yes, he dropped in to create a block on a lot of passing lanes. Um, the six, the extra point he gets for that hooked. Um, pass into into Bowen's um, into Bowen's path. Bowen's run actually makes that pass look significantly better. You yeah. know, if Bowen's not on his bike, that pass is a shit waste of possession. But it's Bowen's run that also makes that pass and the assist fantastic. Um, I'm not taking anything away, hence the reason he does get the extra point. But again, um, in an attacking sense, that was it. He didn't really see a great deal much else from him, but he did work hard. He did drop in um, and was kind of, you know, he, he stopped, uh, blocked a lot of those passing lanes like Lanzini did. Fair enough. Talk to me about Jared Bowen with the two goals. He's going to get a 10 and he's going to mm. get my man of the match. So he's, he's your superhero? No. Oh. Oh, oh, Jared! Listen, Jared Bowen was in the right place at the right time for for both of his goals. He gets a nine from me because of the two goals. The first goal. Listen, I'm going to make a ten. Hey, I thought you said you were giving him a ten. All right, I'll give him a ten. I don't know, maybe a nine, nine and a half, ten. <laughs> his first goal was phenomenal. He doesn't he doesn't look up once from the moment he receives the ball. I've watched it 20, 30 times. Okay. Um he doesn't look up, Rob. He's he doesn't look at he doesn't look at Edison when he comes out. He knows where he's gonna be because the boy's peripheral vision is outstanding. I I I if I may blow my own trumpet slightly. When I played, I was told I had fantastic peripheral vision. I, I could see kind of behind me, if you will. Like, yeah. Jared Bowen sees a whole picture in front of him while his, while his eyes are looking down. He can see, I'm pretty sure he could see Rose Z behind the stand 
when he was running in on goal and he didn't look up from the ball. Um, his peripheral vision is outstanding and he showed that for the first goal. Um, his second goal, the timing of the run and the slight arc, if you will, of running parallel until he has to move forward was phenomenal. And he still had to beat the goalkeeper. He still had to take time with two, three players closing in around him. Uh, I believe Gonzo over at Hammers chat. No, he's not. Oh, no, he isn't. That's what I meant. Um, Gonzo over at Hammers chat said that Jared Bowen could quite easily be our striker next season in the same vein as Jamie Vardy. He has all the attributes of Jamie Vardy. And I am in 125% agreement with Gon uh, Gonzo. It was over at Hammers chat on that comment. 125% agreement. He has all the attributes of, of a Jamie Vardy in a Leicester side. Um, someone also made a comment on Twitter about the big man up top moving out to a left wing position. Mm -hmm. and moving Bowen into a centre-forward position because I feel we're more dangerous. I'm kind of inclined to agree. Or maybe put Antonio left wing, move move Pablo four nails over to the right and stick Bowen up top. No, what no. I'd do is I'd buy, I'd buy Keen Lewis Potter and put Keen, Keen Lewis Potter in Joe and Bowen's position, Antonio out on the left and Bowen up top. That's fair enough. Do. Fair enough. Mind you, Keen Lewis Potter operates on the left, doesn't he? Yes, I know, but I'll tell him, tough shit, move. <laughs> what if he doesn't sign? What if he uh, says, oh, no, you've got to put me there. I'm not putting him pen to paper. Listen, there's two people in the chat that are going to rate me. There's two people in the chat that are going to vilify me for my next You're comment. used to it. But there's one player that has failed to adapt. Oh, that's it. They're going to switch off now. No, no, no. There's one player that has failed to adapt. And, and whether that's Moise's problem or whether you that's Ben Rama. would lie. Oh, uh, listen, we're, we're, we're having a conversation. If if Ben Rama could adapt, he'd be an absolutely sensational player for West Ham. And I'm, I'm in agreement with that. If he could come back and defend as well, it'd be brilliant. And But I just don't think, I, I, I feel he, <laughs> I just feel we can't, I feel like, like he's not adapted to the defensive side of the role. Um, uh, I, I, I Personally, I'd give him next season. I would. I'd see if we could adapt and then we'd go from there. That's a whole different conversation. But that's what I do with Keen Lewis Potter. Adapt and fuck off out the other side. Hey, listen, if he scores two goals and gives me Europa League football next season, James, I'll wear his shirt. I've said this. I've said this. I've got all the time in the world for the man. I have. But he just needs to adapt. And I really hope he does. I really hope Moyes can sit down with him in the summer and say, look, we want to keep you. We just need to adapt. We just need to work with you. Let's see what we can do. And yes, he has. I'm not saying he hasn't. But you've got to then agree that Vlasic deserves another two years as well. That's a different story. Oh, Mikel Antonio, Rob. Mikel Antonio. Um, <laughs> love it, James. I wouldn't go that far, but I love it. Mikel Antonio. Um, he gets my Superman, Rob. Does he? Yeah. Okay. There he is. Resplendent with the S. Oh, Christ. Beast mode, Robert. Absolute beat. What are you doing? It's all right. It's it's for whatever reason. It's just gone a little bit beast, beast mode. On. Just 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 bear Antonio with me. Antonio in beast mode was an absolute joy to watch yesterday. If Antonio doesn't put in the shift he puts in, then Bowen doesn't score two goals. It's that simple. Hmm. City were so preoccupied, so preoccupied with what Antonio was doing that it allowed Bowen to do what Bowen did and get the two goals. They were so... i tell you what. I'm going to quote Jeff Goldblum. Oh? They were so he of the fly and... They were so preoccupied whether they could that they didn't stop to think if they should. Ah. And that, for me, no, I, I, part of me, part of me, Scott, yes, part of me does think he kind of, I, I, I think part of it is the fact that he wasn't getting anything. Anton slash Russ. 
one of Flash, you. Yeah, one of you. Um, I Maybe don't both think he them. Went, it might be. I don't think he went down too easy. What I'm thinking was in Mickey's mind was that he wasn't getting anything for staying on his feet and being dragged from pillar to post. So let me go to the ground and see what I can get. And when he started giving the free kicks to the likes of Fernandinho, Laporte, um, Concello, mm. um, he got really frustrated. He started slamming his hands into the turf. The Canio Bradford is a perfect yep. example of where, um, where Antonio's mind was yesterday. But if he doesn't put in the shift that he puts in, in beast mode, Bowen doesn't get two goals yesterday. Because Bowen dra uh, uh, Antonio dragged the two centre-backs from one side of the pitch to the other side of the pitch to deep on the halfway line, which allowed Bowen for his two goals to get in behind. The Man City defence did not know how to play Mikel Antonio yesterday. He's not my man of the match just because he was the guy scored two goals and Jared Bowen takes that. But mm. everything that Mikel Antonio done yesterday, I absolutely loved, adored, and wish I'd seen more of it throughout the season. Fair enough. Fair enough. Right. Just getting pressing some buttons and I will move on to the substitutes. So talk to me about, I'll tell you what, I'm gonna gonna slightly change tack. I'm I'm gonna start with the manager. Talk to me about David Moyes. Team selection, substitutions, tactics. Um, listen, we didn't win, so I can't give him a ten out of ten. It's the champions, right? He didn't win. What I will say is, um, what I will say is, he. He got it right. For the most part, he got it right. I think the backing off of Grealish and running backwards into our own box, it's got to be a, a, a remit from, from the boss man. Um, the letting them have the ball in their half, you and me discussed this first half, mm. <clears throat> must have come down from him. Agreed. I'm going to disagree with James on the reasons, but I agree with his score. So you're going for an eight? Yeah. Okay. Talk to me about, well, it's probably a little bit, I mean, he didn't come until quite late in the match, did he, Andre Yarmolenko? So I'm probably going to sort of say it's probably unfair to give him a mark because what, he came on in the 90-something minute, didn't he? 94. 90. I've got 90 plus five, it says here. So uh, I, I would suggest that I, I, it's not really fair to mark him on a, on a minute's performance. So I, I'll, I'll let you sort of body swerve him. But talk to me about Ben Johnson. I'm going to give him a 10. You're just Yama. copying Scott, aren't you? No, no, no. Uh, the reason I give Yama a 10 is because he took his time. Took his time trotting fair. into the box, trying to run down that clock. And it just, I, I know it sounds stupid, but he kind of, it, it just rolled a few more seconds off the clock hmm. to the point that if Yarmolenko um, sprints into position, we take the free kick earlier, they may well have got their throw on at the other end. Hmm. Um, as James says, I, I think he scored a lot more important goals than we give him credit for. Oh, Still yeah. don't Still don't forgive him for the dive against um, Kidderminster. Sorry, I can't. That's not how we do things. Um, but the, as James it's not says, not the first to have done it, though, is it? No, the goal against Chelsea, the goal against uh, Villa, the yeah. goal against um, Seville. Yeah, you know, it might not be. He might not have been the greatest of signings, but the importance of the those just those goals that I've mentioned are very, very important. So I, I say thank you to Yarmolenko as well. We know he's he's not going to be at the club next season, so this was his last home performance. Mm -hmm. um, Seville, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, but I do say thank you to Yama as well. Yeah, and it's 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 not his fault that he's an injury prone player. 
I'm sure he wishes that that were not the case, but yes, you know, when, when he's, when he's brought something to the table, he, he, it's been something usually fairly significant, I would suggest. Well, he's so, delivered, it's been a significant delivery. Yeah. It's been yeah. an Amazon rather than um, on, on this question, um, the answer is no. I don't think you can say that a player that was brought in for, what, 18, 19 million four years ago and has taken 100 million, 100 million a week, um, 100 grand a week is has done himself justice when for probably the bulk of the last two and a half seasons he's been on the bench. But as I say, a lot of that is down to injuries, which I'm sure he wishes was was not the case. But has he done himself justice? Yes. I, 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 I'm going to say his no. goal against Everton. I, uh, Messi chop. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm going to say no. But he's had Fair moments enough. within his four years here where he's, you know, um, uh, I mean, for the goal against Seville, if that's what you're referencing, maybe. But I, I, I'm not entirely sure that. I, Listen, I don't know. The last, the last, the last couple of months, his mind has obviously been elsewhere. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, yeah, I, yeah, will, and yeah, I, will, yeah. I will, I will, I, I, I will. Yeah, there is. I will that. allow him that. I will, I will, you know, yeah. listen, fuck that. If that was my situation, I'd be in pieces. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, whether he, whether he did, whether he hasn't been value for money is. <laughs> Suppose yes, I agree. Yes. Yeah, there is yes. that. Yes. But talk to me. Then we're going to finish with Mark Noble. No, oh, I thought we. I hadn't even done Ben Johnson yet. I went oh, back sorry. to Yarmolenko. Uh, ben Johnson again wasn't wasn't. Uh, there for a huge amount of time, but he came on and he did a job. It kind of just gave us an extra body back. I'm going to give him a six again. It wasn't, it's not a standout or any of that bullshit, but it was, I'll give the guy a six. Yeah. yeah I mean, he came on in the 90 plus two minutes. So again, it's probably a little bit unfair to he just mark added him, it, but... He added another number there. though. He just added yeah. another body at the back. Yeah. So we're going to finish with on his last home appearance. I think it's right and proper. Give it's it Mark to Noble. Him. Give you, it you're to going him. to, aren't you? I knew you would. <whistles> oh, for Christ's sakes. Hang on. Move forward. Yeah, I know. There you go. Move to the front. Um, oh. He came on with what? 20, it would have been 20 minutes in the end, 25 minutes in the end. Mm. He played. He looked confident. He looked solid. He didn't look out of place, Rob. Like nope. with 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 you know, we thought could be an issue at points. Um, yeah, so I'm getting emotional again. <laughs> he yeah, he looked like a player that's got another two years in him, Rob. To be honest, when he came on, I know he doesn't, and we know that his legs are gone, and he could quite easily drop down. Oh, don't show it! Don't show it! Don't show it! Because um, the bastard's beating me to it. Um, the man could drop down to the championship, or or even he could drop down to League One, or even the championship, and put in a shift for another year. He could probably go to the MLS and be the best player in that league next season. I have no doubt. The man, the man can still do a job outside of the Premier League and probably outside of the top flight in a lot of countries, unfortunately. But he can still go show a job, and it's not just what he what he delivers on a pitch. It's it's what he shows off of it. Um, you know what he can. Um, what he can bring to a club. I mean, I, I started a comment um, from James earlier about at what point do you bring Noble back? Um, at the earliest opportunity, James, um, for me, you know, if it means giving him a year away from football so he can be on the be, be on the beach, why, um, you know, Craig Dawson is is uh, marking Erlen Haaland next year, then, <laughs> then so be it. Um, 
but I, he needs to come back in any kind of capacity um, within our club at the earliest opportunity at the earliest opportunity that he would like be it technical director football director director of transfers whatever I don't give a shit he needs something and then if he if he wants to you know lead lead the club out as a, as a manager then we get him on them coaching courses as soon as we can we we get him doing what he needs to do if he wants to take over what was Tony Carr's role, an, an academy director, give the man what he fucking wants. I don't care. I don't care. Give him what he wants. But as Peter turned around and said, what else do you give Mark Noble? But number 16. He gets a 16 from me. Fair enough. Fair enough. Okay. So let's get rid of that. And... I think we're coming towards the end now, Duke. As uh, we've only been screen. going two hours, you know. Yeah, I mean, nothing. Yeah. I'm starving, hungry. I was going to go get something to eat about an hour ago, but it's all good. <laughs> um, guys, please, if you can, dig deep and support the Iron Supporting Food, food Banks charity. I did I tell you what. Bear with me, because what I'll do is I will. I know I did it earlier on in the chat, but that's probably in the dim and distant past. So I will do it again. And just put this in the comment section. And if any of you guys have got a spare few quid that you can give to any families in the Newham Borough area that are struggling in this cost of living crisis that we're all going through, but some of us are luckier than others. And some of these families that are being supported are really struggling. And it, it would be some some of these people are, as Mark Noble put it, the West Ham family. And if you know, look after, look after your family. So if you can put a few quid into that particular fighting fund, please do. And as always guys, we thank you very much indeed for your support. As I say, it's, it's a good thing. If you can, if you can give to this, it really is. So Duke final, final thoughts. Uh, I just want to say uh, quickly, Peter, don't worry about it. It's fine. Great minds think alike. Um, to quote James, uh, the, or to mention James, I'm going to quote uh, Scott. Stop it. <laughs> Just stop it and imagine that. Um, Deck won't be leaving anytime soon. I, I don't see him signing an eight year contract, granted. But Cheers, mate. You know, I don't see him. Thank you very much, James. Much appreciated, my man. Um, yeah, I mean, listen. We're in a situation where we've just qualified for the second season of European football through our league places. It's not like we've we've done it the other way and gone through and won. We've actually competed in Europe. We've competed in the two home-based trophies, last 16, last uh, last eight, quarter-final. Um, we got to the semi-final of a major European champion, uh, major European tournament, and we finished. Possibly seventh in the league, could be sixth in the league. It's a successful season all round, Mr. Rob. So, in short, Duke, I would suggest that you are you saying that we're fairly large? Um, what I'm telling you, it's not even what I'm saying. I'm telling you, and I'm letting everyone else out there know that we are fucking massive. And we could still finish sixth. Not bad, not bad. Guys, please don't forget to like, comment on, and share this stream to your social media platforms. Subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't already done so, and hit the bell icon for alerts on new content. As always, guys, we thank you very much indeed for your support. Only one thing left to say. Come on, you irons. Long live Mark Noble.